we've been talking about and teaching and ministering on the school of the Holy Spirit, and we've shared a lot of of things that that uh, concerning the Holy Spirit. Uh, we've last week we shared concerning the sevenfold Spirit of God, and um, and we shared about the the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, the spirit of might, uh, you know, the spirit of discernment. We just shared just all the different aspects of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we want to uh, talk about uh, the Holy Spirit today, uh, and we're gonna, and we started on Wednesday talking about the two different ways in which we receive the Holy Spirit. We're going to go along that trail, and we're going to add some things to it. We're going to go to several openings, so keep your Bible handy, because we're going to go to the Word of God. Uh, 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 the, there are two different ways that we receive the Holy Spirit, and so I want you to, um, I want us to turn to, to an opening uh, in um, in St. John, the, thir the seventh chapter, 37 through the 39th verses. I want you to look at, at uh, John, St. John, and I want you to look at the seventh chapter, and the, we're going we're gonna, to uh, start at the 37th verse. When you have it, say Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word. We ask you, O oh God, that you will anoint us to speak as your oracle, that your people might be edified, blessed, and Lord, that revelation might come for appropriation. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Verse 37 says, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believed on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Now, there are two different manifestations, two different receivings of the Holy Spirit. We shared with you, praise God, and in review, we shared with you out of St. John, the 20th chapter, and, and, uh, and, the, um, and the 19th verse, St. John 20 and 19, and this is, it says, the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands his, and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. And Jesus, and then said Jesus unto them, again, peace be unto you. As my father has sent me, so I send, so I send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Now. This was a move from Old Testament salvation to New Testament salvation. Old Testament salvation was based on the fact that the Old Testament believers would be believing and they would be looking for Shiloh to come. And, but this was salvation according to New Testament salvation when Jesus breathed on them. There was two requirements for salvation under the new covenant. And that, and that one requirement is to confess Jesus as Lord. And the second requirement is to believe that God raised him from the dead. So at that moment, they received New Testament salvation. At this point, the disciples received the divine, eternal, resurrected life of Jesus into them. But they lacked direction for ministry and they made no impact. In other words, he breathed on them. They received the Holy Spirit. They were regeneration. They were born again, praise God. And, but if you notice is that when Jesus breathed on them to receive the Holy Spirit, it, it, was, it had no impact on the world. It had no impact. It had an impact on them, but it did not affect the world as, as we know it. They, many, and, and even it talks about some of them even went back fishing. 
But what but Jesus told them that there was more for them to receive. Let's look at, at a couple of openings. Let's look at Luke, Luke, the 24th chapter, St. Luke, the 24th chapter. And let's look at verse 48. And it says, and ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Then in Acts, the first chapter, Acts 1 and 4, and it reads as follows. It says, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which, he, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And when therefore and, and they and they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times, the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. Verse 8, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. When Jesus breathed on them and they received the Holy Ghost, they received the regeneration, the born-again experience, but that experience did not impact the world. But Jesus gave them a command in Luke 24 in Acts 1 that they should look for the promise of the Father. The promise of the Father. John truly baptized with water, but I but there's one coming after me, didn't John say it, that will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. So they had received the Holy Ghost in salvation, but Jesus told them there was more to receive. I know you're born again. You may be watching us on, uh, 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 on social media, and maybe you've been born again. You've been baptized, but you've never, praise God, went on to receive the, the, the Holy Spirit baptism. Jesus told them that there was another experience in the Holy Ghost and that they should go and they should wait for the promise of the Father so that they could be endued with power from on high. Amen? And so on, on Resurrection Sunday, they were born again. On Pentecostal Sunday, they, the promise of the Father was poured out. In Acts, let's, let's look at Acts 2. Acts 2. We were in Acts 1, look at the Acts chapter 2. And we can start at the first verse. Most of us are familiar with this who have been in a Pentecostal church. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So the Pentecostal experience. Now Pentecost, praise God. Pentecost, the day of Pentecost had fully come. The, the day of Pentecost was one of the feasts of Israel that they celebrated. It was the it was the feast of fifty days, Pentecost. The fifty it was it was the fifty days. Praise God from uh, the 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 Exodus uh, unto the giving of the law, and so it was a, a momentous occasion. They celeb Jesus uh, Jesus celebrated. Uh, praise God the Passover feast. Praise God with them. Praise God. And he told them to go and wait. And when the day of Pentecost, 50 days, 50 days, it's significant that it was 50 days. 50 is the number that is used to symbolize liberty, freedom, and deliverance. 50, the, 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 the uh, Pentecost, uh, the feast of Pentecost was also the feast of Jubilee. It was the Jubilee. It was the time when all debts were forgiven, when all debts were, were, were canceled. It was the time, praise God, of release, liberty, freedom, deliverance. And so it was significant that on that very day, the day of Pentecost, that there was, praise God, an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. It was an immersion into the Spirit of God. It was a different experience from just receiving the born-again experience, but it was immersion from above. In other words, the power of the Holy, the Holy Ghost came down as a rushing mighty wind. It filled the house and it filled them. 
In other words, they were filled and also the house was filled. And, and so if they were in the house, then they were encompassed by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, immersion in the Holy Ghost. And then, praise God, uh, th there was an infilling. And then there was an overflow. Just like Jesus said, he said, if you believe on me as the scripture has said it, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now, this was a momentous occasion. Let me just say this, is that you have to understand that this was a tremendous breakthrough. This was a manifestation, praise God, of a new day. It was a new day. It was a new thing that God had never done before. In the Old Testament, you had the prophet, the priest, and the king were anointed by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost would come upon them. But here it is, praise God, that Jesus is telling them, praise God, that, that to go in Jerusalem and wait until you be endued with power from on high. And praise God. And the, 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 the Bible tells us in the first chapter of Acts that there was, a, there was a, a 120 that went and waited in Jerusalem. And that 120 included the 11 apostles, praise God. But it also included Mary, the mother of Jesus. It included some of his family members, 120. 20 people praise God in other words in the Old Testament it was the priest the prophet and the king that were anointed but now God is about to open up the heavens and pour out the spirit upon all flesh and when they asked Jesus asked Peter they said what is this what is this manifestation and and Peter stood up and said that these are not drunk as ye suppose but this is that that was spoken of by the prophet Joel in the last days saith God I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your young men shall see visions your old men shall dream dream on the servants and on your handmaidens I will pour out of my spirit the spirit of God this baptism of the Holy Ghost is not just for apostles it's not just for prophets it's not just for preachers it's not just for uh, uh, praise God for, for priests it is for the whole body of Christ this was a new day Folk in the Old Testament would have to go to the, to, to the priest. They would have to go to the king. They would have to go to the prophet in order to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. But this is a new day. This is a breakthrough. This is Pentecost. This is the day of liberty and freedom and deliverance. This is a day of equal opportunity anointing. And now, praise God, God is pouring out his Spirit. And Peter said he poured it out on all flesh. All flesh. Black flesh, white flesh, Indian flesh, Arab flesh, all flesh. In other words, praise God, this was a tremendous breakthrough. People say, what in the world is going on? We know these, these 11 apostles are strange, but what about these other folk? The women are prophesying. The, the children are prophesying. <laughs> the, the workers are prophesying. The laborers are prophesying. The kings are prophesying. Everybody is prophesying. Everybody is speaking in tongues. Everybody is filled with the Holy Ghost. This is a new day. This is a radical change in the, in the way that God would deal with his people. He, he gathers a people, praise God, and he causes them not only to be born again, but fills them with the Holy Ghost and with power. Somebody say power. power. Jesus said you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. This is a different manifestation of the Holy Ghost. This is a different receiving of the Holy Ghost. The disciples now, praise God, when, you, when they received the salvation experience, uh, it helped them, but praise God, it had no impact upon others, praise God. But on the day of Pentecost, the disciples received now the manifested supernatural power, boldness to witness insight into scripture, and they were released into their apostolic mission. In other words, praise God, there was a difference. There's a difference when you are baptized with the Holy Ghost than when, praise God, you are born again. 
The born again experience is like what Jesus told the woman at the well. There shall be a well of water in you springing up into everlasting life. That's the born again experience. But on the seventh, in the seventh chapter of St. John, Jesus gives another experience. And he said, he that thirst, let him come. For if you believe on me as the scripture has said it, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. There's a difference between a well and a river. How many know there's a difference between a well and a river? A well can help you, but a river can, can, can heal a whole city, can turn around, praise God, can, can cause they to drink, praise God, in a nation, praise God. Rivers of living water. A different experience. Just, just look at your name and say it's a different experience. Different experience. In other words, I'm born again, I'm baptized, but now, praise God, I've been empowered by the Holy Ghost. These disciples, praise God, that made no impact after their born again experience, praise God, but after they were baptized with the Holy Ghost, they were released into the power of God, the boldness of God. Peter stood up and preached one message, and 3,000 souls were saved. They had impact. Have you received the Holy Ghost? See, it's the overflow. It's the, it's the immersion of the Holy Ghost. It's the infilling to overflowing. And it, and it causes you to have power. Causes you to have power. Thank you, Jesus. And causes you to be able to operate in the power of God. We're going to later talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but you need power. When you're ministering, you need power. You need more than just a message. You need some miracles. You need some signs. Uh, you need some wonders. You need some deliverance. Uh, praise God. You need more, praise God, than just, praise God, than just a salvation experience. Thank God for salvation. That is so important and most important. But there is an, there is an anointing. Jesus did not start his ministry until he went out into the wilderness and fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and the Bible says praise God he returned in the power of the spirit and the Bible says he went into the temple and there they gave him the book and he opened up to Isaiah 60 and he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to set at liberty them that are blue. And then he said, and, the, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The acceptable year of the Lord was the year of Jubilee. Jesus was showing us what would happen to us because he said the same spirit. He said, if you believe on me, praise God, they that believe on me, the works that I do, they shall do in greater works because I go unto my Father. In other words, there's coming a day that the same anointing that's upon me, Jesus was saying, is going to be on you. You need the anointing. You need the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit, eh, anointed by the Holy Ghost. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power that went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. You need some power in your life. That Holy Ghost gives you power. Thank you, Jesus. And Jesus was talking about that same anointing. See, you need an anointing. Because, praise God, some folks don't know what the anointing is. They think the anointing is when you feel good or when you get goosebumps rolling up and down your spine and running up your, your arms. And praise God, they think that's the anointing. But the true anointing, the way that you can tell whether it is the anointing is not, praise God, what it looks like, praise God. But what you know about the anointing, the Bible says the, it is the anointing that destroys the yoke. If it does not destroy the yoke, it's not the anointing. It might sound good. It might look good. It might make you feel good. But if it does not destroy the yoke, it is not the anointing. The anointing destroys the yoke. It breaks yokes over people's lives. You need the anointing when you're preaching because you need to have yokes removed and burdens removed and yokes destroyed by the power of the Holy Ghost. 
People are demon possessed. They are oppressed. They are under the, 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 uh, the influence of the enemy. And you need an anointing that destroys the yoke. Oh, they sung, it, it was so anointed. Well, was any yokes broken? Was anybody delivered? Was anybody healed? Was any lives turned around? It may have felt good, but it was not the anointing. Because the anointing destroys the yoke. I don't know what you're, what you're bothered with, but the Holy Ghost, praise God, anointing of the Holy Ghost comes, praise God, to destroy every yoke. Thank you, Jesus. So he said, don't go out preaching because you'll be preaching to folks that demon possess and your apostles, you'll get, I know you've experienced some, some things under my anointing, praise God, when I was with you, when I imparted to you my anointing, but I'm going to give you an anointing of your own. Quit wanting everybody else's anointing and just, praise God, get an anointing of your own. Tell your neighbor, you need an anointing of your own. Oh boy, ain't she anointed. You need an anointing of your own. Because there's some yokes you're going to have to face one of these days. And you're going to need something that, praise God, that can destroy the yoke. See, if the yoke is broken, it might be able to be put back together. But when it is destroyed, Ha, koba shata. Ha, robo shata. The anointing destroys the yoke. It causes, praise God, that which binds people up. Because you're not dealing with just trying to convince people mentally concerning Jesus. You need to do just like Jesus did. The Bible says in Acts, the first chapter, that he showed himself, uh, praise God, by infallible proofs. In other words, infallible proof. In other words, proof that could not be denied. And in John it says, if all the miracles and things that Jesus did was written in a book, there would not be books enough to contain them in the whole world. He said these things were written just enough so you could believe. He didn't put, they didn't put everything that Jesus' anointing did. They did not put everything that Jesus did. You can't praise God because, praise God, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is unlimited. It will cause you to be able to do exploits. It will cause you to be able to cast out devils, to heal the sick, to, praise God, to preach the gospel with an anointing that people's lives will literally be changed forever. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Oh, oh, I can tell when folks are anointed. They start talking and you start feeling free. They start speaking, praise God, and hey, halabashata, and devils, praise God, are leaving. Devils are fleeing, praise God. Tobra sakatam rosetaya. Rabasata. Arabasata, Robo do Shepata Karabasata. Let me get in. Let me, let me look at some more scriptures because after Acts 2, the, the receiving the Holy Ghost, the Pentecostal experience, there, are, there, is, there is one significant sign that you had been baptized with the Holy Ghost. And that was, the, that was the visible seal of the Holy Ghost. And that is, praise God, uh, the distinctive seal was speaking with other tongues. And it is important that we, that we, that we emphasize this sign because it is a sign that was given to the, to the New Testament church. It was a sign given to them to know that they had been baptized with the Holy Ghost. There are those that say, well, you know, I've been baptized with the Holy Ghost. I've never spoken to other tongues. Well, let me say this to you, is that the Bible shows us that the sign 
of that you had received was the manifestation of the ability to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. It was on the day of Pentecost. Let's look at a few other openings. I'm very quickly. I'm going to go to, to Acts the eighth chapter, Acts eight, and let's look at uh, this was when when Philip went down to the city of Samaria and he preached Christ to them. You, most of you know the story, and praise God, and many of them believed and were baptized. And then praise God, but they had not received the, this second experience. They had received the born again experience. They had been baptized in water. But on, in the 14th verse, it says, Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Well, my God, they did, they've been baptized. They believe that Jesus rose from the dead. They've been saved. But there is another experience that they had not received. It was an experience subsequent to salvation. And so, praise God, Peter and John sent, were sent from Jerusalem to, to Samaria. And verse 15 says, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. And verse 16 says, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. The 17th verse says, then laid they their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw through the laying of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Now, this is what I want you to see. You don't see here directly the sign of speaking in other tongues. But let me say this to you. It is, it, it is inferred very, uh, it, is, it, is, it is much inferred that there was something that happened there that, that Simon saw. Simon saw something. He said, when he seen that they, that by the laying on of the apostles' hand, they were baptized with the Holy Ghost, that he wanted to buy it. What did Simon see? Somebody said, well, they saw it was great joy. No, go, if you go up early, it'll talk about it was great joy. He had already seen great joy. He had already seen these other manifestations of joy. It, it, is, it, 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 is, it, is, it is very, very rational for us to understand that what he saw when they were baptized with the Holy Ghost was the same thing that the people saw in Acts 2 when the, when the 120 had been baptized with the Holy Ghost. They, they, uh, I believe that Simon saw them speak with other tongues and therefore now he wants to buy it. Let's look at another, chap, uh, another verse, verses because I want to give you some scriptural foundation then we're going to pray. Chapter 10, look at chapter 10 of, of the book of Acts. Acts 10, and let's look at verse 44. It says, and while Peter yet spake these words, this is at the house of Cornelius, when Cornelius sent for Peter and Joppa, and he comes down and he, and, and he, and he speaks to them concerning Jesus. And then verse 44 says, while he was yet speaking these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word, and they were of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost and they heard them speak with other with tongues and magnify God and then Peter okay we, we he said them not to be forbidden to be to be baptized but how many know praise God that the Holy Ghost fell on them while Peter was still preaching and they spoke in other tongues. The sign of speaking in other tongues. Look at, look at chapter 19 of the, the book of Acts. Chapter 19 of the book of Acts. Look at verse 2. I'm going to start with verse 1. It says, and it came to pass while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be a Holy Ghost. Woo, thank you, Jesus. And he said unto them, what then? 
were you baptized? And they said, under John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto you people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them. They spake in tongues and prophesied. You notice they spoke in tongues and prophesied. What was the sign of the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Speaking in other tongues. What was the sign of the baptism of the Holy Ghost? When the Gentiles came in, it was speaking in other tongues. Paul tells us in one scripture that he spoke in tongues more than all of them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with tongues and I want to deal with that and, and the significance of tongues because we need to understand, praise God, that it's not just the initial sign. It's not just the initial sign, but there is a, there is a manifestation of the Spirit of God through the speaking in other tongues that we need to access. He gave us the, the, the ability to pray in tongues. The Bible says, building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost. He gave us the prayer in the Holy Ghost for a reason. It activates the power of God. It activates the Spirit of God. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues, your spirit is praying. Say this with me. Say, when I pray in, in tongues, it helps me to locate my spirit. Because your spirit is praying. You need to be able to locate your spirit because it is, it is the spirit, praise God. It is, the, it is where God dwells in your spirit. And you need to know how to, how to locate your spirit and, 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 and not get caught up in your little mind. God is not a mind. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. I'm not going to talk about tongues right now, but I want to give you, it is the distinct sign. It is the seal that the apostles received, number one. It is, it is the seal that was recognized by others. It was recognized by others that this was the manifestation of uh, and the visible seal and sign of being baptized with the Holy Ghost. And you know this, that after they were baptized with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues, the disciples, the apostles, they never asked for another sign. They never asked for another sign. In other words, praise God, when Jesus told them to go and wait until you be endued with power, they did not actually know what would happen to them. But when they were baptized and spoke in other tongues, they knew that was the sign of them being baptized with the Holy Ghost. And they never asked for a different sign. And the New Testament does not offer any other alternatives, signs to being baptized with the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. There's no other alternative sign. There's no alternative seal to the Holy Ghost in the New Testament. So we need to understand, praise God, that this is an experience that every one of us can receive. It does not eliminate anybody. It is a new day, saints of God. It's a new day. The church, praise God, we're living, praise God, in the days where every person can be anointed by the Holy Ghost. Every believer can be anointed and can be filled and can be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Children can be baptized, uh, praise God. Uh, your sons and your daughters, praise God. Old folks and young folk can be baptized. There is no limit to who, praise God, can be filled with the Holy Ghost. Ghost. Once you have been born again and received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, God has a gift for you, and it's called the gift of the Holy Ghost. It is the overflow, praise God, of the power, the anointing, the, 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 the dunamis of God flowing through you, praise God, and it causes you to be effective in your witness. Thank you, Jesus. You said, ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So many of you may have, some of you, I, I, I trust that, that, that 
most of us have been filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized with the Holy Ghost, baptized and speaking in other tongues. But if you have not received that experience, you need, praise God, to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the signs speaking in other tongues. It will, it will free you into a new dimension. It'll free you into a new level. It'll bring you, praise God, into, in, into, into a new power and authority in your life. Praise God. And praise God. And if you will utilize, praise God, the, the gifts, the tools the, 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 that the Holy Ghost manifests, praise God, you will see, praise God, the signs, wonders, miracles manifested in your life and through your life. Now, I don't know how many of you have not. Is there anyone here that, that has not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit speaking in other tongues? Oh, there's two people here. Have not. Three. Okay. I didn't hear that. I can't hear her. Oh, she's getting baptized. Oh, she's being baptized in water. Okay. Well, let me, let me, let me say this, and, and I'm going to because... Is that the Bible says that God, that, that, that uh, Jesus will give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. It's amazing that it is not automatic. It was not automatic in, in, in Samaria. That as soon as they got believed that Jesus rose from the dead and got saved, it wasn't automatic that they were baptized with the Holy Ghost. In other words, when Jerusalem heard, they sent Peter and John down there to, get the, to, to finish the work. And so the Holy Spirit baptism is after your salvation, after, your, after you have received Jesus, accepted him as your Savior and Lord. And then, praise God, in Luke 11 and, uh, and 11, it talks about that he gives the Holy Spirit, Jesus gives the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. Let me tell you how to receive the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you how to receive the Holy Ghost. First of all, you've got to ask the Father. Jesus is the baptizer. Let me, let, me just, let me just give you some scriptures because scriptures, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In Luke, the 11th chapter, and let's look at verse 11, and it says, if your son shall ask for bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, Will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, shall he offer him a scorpion? Verse 13 says, ye then, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? In other words, you need to ask the Father to fill you with the Holy Ghost. This scripture is very important because many times people think, well, if I open myself up and to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, how do I know I'm going to receive the right spirit? It's because if you ask the Father for the, the right spirit, he's not going to give you the wrong one. That's what he's, he's telling. In other words, you're not going to get the wrong one. You're going to get the right one. And then praise God. And so you have to ask. And then in, in, in John 3, excuse me, John 7, 37, is, is Jesus tells you, gives you a formula for receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He says in verse 37, in the last day of the great feast, Jesus stood and cried, if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. You, you have, if you're going to receive the Holy Ghost, you got to be thirsty. No one is baptized with the Holy Ghost as does, does not thirst for the Holy Ghost. It don't fall on you like ripe cherries off of a tree. It is, it is, you must ask, you must want, you must desire the Holy Ghost baptism. So you must be thirsty. And then, because Jesus said, he that thirst. And then he said, come unto me. And then you come to the Lord. 
I'm thirsty, Lord. I'm coming to you to receive the baptism. So you must come. And then finally he said in, in uh, verse 14, in verse 37, the latter part, if any man thirsts, let him come and drink. In other words, you come, you must drink. You must drink. How do you drink? You open your mouth and you receive. You must drink. It's drinking in the Holy Spirit. And then, praise God, he said, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said it, he said, drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Then there is the manifestation or the release of the overflow. In Matthew 12, in verse 34, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. And then he talks about out of the good, out of a good man, out of his good treasures of his heart, bringeth forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasures bringeth forth evil things. And so, praise God, it's out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And so, it is the outflowing of the Holy Spirit. We drink and then we release the outflow. Release the outflow, speaking in other tongues. And then you must... You must deal with two things that Satan will do to try to distract you from receiving. The first thing he'll say, his objection will be, is that when you speak in tongues, that you're doing it yourself. That's one of the ways. That you do, you're just doing that yourself. And then how do you know you got the right thing? I've just dealt with that. Jesus, if you ask the Father for the right, he'll give you the right thing. Amen? He'll give you the Holy Spirit. I want to, uh, everyone, if you'll stand in the house of the Lord. I want to pray. If you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if you're not born again, how many people do we have in here that are, that are not born again? You, you've never been born again. Because I want to make sure before, because the, the Holy Spirit baptism is not a gift for the unsaved. It's a gift for the saved. You, you have to be saved first before you can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so, if you're, if you're hungry for the Holy Spirit, and you're thirsty for the Holy Spirit, then I want, I want to pray with you. And, and, and we're going to pray together. I'm going to pray a corporate prayer. I'm going to pray together. And, uh, and then I want you, to, I want you to, to receive, you know, receive. Uh, I want you to receive. That's, and and it's a, it's a, in the spirit, it's kind of, when you tell people to receive in the spirit, sometimes they're trying to grasp it with their mind, and they need to grasp it with their spirit. But... To receive is that your, your heart is reaching and accepting. So let's, let's lift our hands to the Lord. I'm going to pray a prayer, then I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Father, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for our sins, you rose from the dead. Lord, we thank you for this great salvation in which we stand. Jesus, your promise, the promise of the Father was that if we believe on you, as the scripture said, that out of our belly would flow rivers of living water. You said that you would give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, that the Holy Spirit is right here, ready to fill those that have not been filled to overflowing and to give them the ability to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance. If you haven't received, and we'll just pray with you. Say, Lord Jesus, you are the baptizer. 
I'm thirsty for more of you. Fill me with the Holy Spirit to overflowing. Baptize me in your spirit. I receive the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Now, I just want you to just, 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 I want you to, to open your heart. I know we got these masks. I know y'all got these masks on. <laughs> but I want you to just now just open your heart, close your eyes, forget about everybody around here. Jesus is right there ready to baptize you. And I want you to just open your heart right now and say, Lord Jesus, I receive the Holy Spirit. I receive the Holy Spirit now in Jesus' name. Now out of your belly, just begin to yeah, that's it. Come on, flow. Just begin to speak those usherings that you sense in your spirit. Out of your belly, out of your belly, out of your innermost being. Is flow brea sele mandolo cubria talamanzo robo curia tando robo sanda. Thank you, halalaba santo brea sataramashanda. Oh, raba sanda robo sanda. Don't say anything in English, just say in the spirit. Ando ribe kira bando robo sende raba sanda raba sanda. Lo regada robo sele mandele mandolo sulinga namasondo robo sanda. I know you don't understand it with your head, but your spirit is praying. Bendele sele mahaya, zolo kunde le mendi asumba handele mongode, zelengonde danda rabasata, rabando robo sete robo sanda, orando rigi de shero marasariando robo sanda. Be filled with the Holy Ghost to overflowing now. Anedededio shataya. Ye bando robo sete araba sanda koraba mama mama shanda araba sata. In the name of Jesus, come on, just continue. Ente as you continue to allow the Spirit to escape your lips from your innermost being. Continue. The articulation will come. The the greater anointing will come. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, put your hands together and give God praise, saints. We don't have no mic up here. Oh, you got the mic. No, you don't have them. Just, okay. I'll let you use mine. Now, you know that's, <laughs> release the word of the Lord. The teachings, the spirit of the Lord says that you are getting, God says, as the man of God is laboring in the word, don't take them lightly. They are for this time and for this season. To everything there is a season. To everything under the sun. They are not words for enticement of man's wisdom. But for demonstration of the spirit's power. They are coming to you to be put on like a garment. They are to be worn like a cloak. That they are not for you to hear only, but for you to do. Don't be hearers of the word only. They are to be put on like an armor. Put on the whole armor. Put on the whole armor. Yes, you put on the helmet. Yes, you put on the breastplate. Yes, you gird about your loins with the truth. Yes, you shroud your feet with the preparation of the gospel. But put on the Holy Spirit's power you have now been endued with power from on high God is furnishing you and equipping you with power in these teachings on the Holy Spirit you have the equipment 
to do the work of the ministry. Yes. These are the signs that will follow you that believe. Receive the Holy Ghost afresh. Receive the breath afresh. Receive uh, the Holy Spirit's power afresh. Come on, somebody put your hands together. There, there's, a, there's another release. Hallelujah. I thought she was. Okay. There is a new baptism of the Holy Ghost. A fresh is, is a better word that I feel the Lord is saying. There's a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit that is going to come over the church. Because there, 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 there has to be a new start and there has to be a new beginning for the church. There has to be a jubilee for the church. And the Lord says, I'm sending a new, uh, a, a fresh baptism of my spirit upon my house. And the Lord says that I shall do great and mighty miracles. They have already begun, but the Lord says they shall increase in the days to come, says the spirit of the living God.